Hi, this is Andrew McLaren. We're going to be going over reduction potentials and why you don't multiply them uh, when you multiply the, the reaction or why they're, they're intensive. So you've probably seen that word in a textbook. So when you have like these two half reactions, like for these two chemicals right here, and you combine them, you can see like I've multiplied the reaction by two but not the voltage that corresponds as its uh, reduction potential. And I wanted to help you understand uh, today why. So we're gonna be doing some concepts and drawings and kind of talking about that. And then we'll go over some actual calculations. And hopefully by the end of today, you'll understand why you don't multiply these numbers. And it's a really common misconception because people think like, oh, if I have twice as many ions, then that's going to affect the voltage, isn't it? And you're right, because if you think about like the cell potential for like a neuron, that's all about balancing the ions and that creates some sort of voltage. So it is a misconception that that would be affecting the standard reduction potentials. It does come into some other equations in chemistry, but those are typically more taught at college level, but you can get the big picture understanding with a high school level of chemistry. So we'll go over that. So the main reason reduction potentials are intrinsic, why you don't multiply, is that you haven't changed the concentration when you change the, um, the coefficients in the reaction. So you may have some sort of chemical reaction right here, where you've got some iron and copper in the two parts of the battery. And it's always assumed that if we're in standard conditions that we're working with a one molar concentration. Um, you can imagine that some of these electrons are going to go over from this side over onto that side. So because this side is um, giving off electrons and then this side is taking in the electrons. So the two sides are complementary to each other. Um, it's important to note that this can also be shown in the standard conditions. So most of the time when we're talking about a standard cell, it's with hydrogen gas. And so hydrogen's on one side, and then you've got whatever you're talking about on the other side. So if you're talking about chlorine, that would be its uh, voltage potential. And this kind of makes sense that uh, chlorine and sodium are gonna have opposite voltages because uh, chlorine right here, you can kind of see is it naturally wants to take in electrons to become a negative charge. And uh, sodium wants to give off electrons to become a positive charge. So these things having opposite um, reduction potentials does kind of make sense there. Um, but one thing to keep a note is that if you were to change the number of the um, concentration of these ions in here, it would change the voltage. Um, it's just that's not what we're doing when we're working with standard reduction potentials. It's always one molar and one molar for whatever ions you're talking about. It makes it really nice for like k equilibrium calculations <laughs> if you have one molar for everything basically it makes the math really really easy um and then i want to show you these little tables that i've made right here because basically what i want to show you is that you can take the cell potentials of the two half reactions and you can combine them because essentially what you're doing here is saying like okay this copper um when it goes from copper to plus to just copper you get a positive 0.34 voltage. Um, the iron actually has a opposite voltage. If you look at its reduction potential, it actually goes down in its voltage going from the two plus to iron. So you can kind of see like that negative and positive right here. And then you can actually think about what you're doing when you're looking at the oxidation potential is that you're going the opposite way than the reduction potential. And so you're, you're kind of changing the signs there. And so that's kind of why when you want to think about combining these two things, you add their potentials, right? But then people think like, oh, well, if I'm changing uh, the number in the half reaction, like if I had this, these two that I'm trying to combine, um, you guys oftentimes want to multiply this number because you multiplied the numbers in the balanced reaction. Um, but remember, it's all about concentration, and we haven't really changed the concentrate the um, concentration here. We're just changing uh, the coefficients to say what the balanced reaction is, 
because we're still saying we have like one of one of these things and we're going up to one of one of those things, even though in the balanced reaction, you've got these different number of coefficients showing the number of molecules that would be um, exchanging the electrons between each other. Doesn't change the concentration when you change these numbers in the balanced reaction um, for a standard reduction potential. Be careful though, because when you're talking about energy and like Gibbs free energy and that stuff, that absolutely does get multiplied when you're talking about doubling the reaction. Just be careful with that stuff. Also, one other thing to keep in mind is that there's these things called electrochemical gradients. You'll see this in biology when they talk about neurons. And you'll have two um, sides that have different concentrations. Some of these are going to flow over from the high concentration to the low. And then it'll be like a mismatch of the balance of the charge. So it's like it wants to flow down its concentration one way, but it's getting pushed back by the positive charge that's already there, right? Because this will end up becoming like a, a more positive charge than that sign. And so you end up having that charge correspond to the concentration. And so if you think about that in terms of biology, the concentration absolutely affects the electrical charge. But that's not what we're changing when we're doing standard reduction potentials. So that's the main reason. Um, let's look at some math, though, and, and help you see it a little bit differently, OK? So when you're combining two half reactions, you typically see something like this, where they give you the half reactions and their potentials. And you might have to multiply to cancel out the electrons in the balanced reaction. But you don't multiply these voltages here. You just add them or subtract them. And I talked a little bit about why with the concept part. Um, but this is the equation where you really start to see um, like concentration being brought in and talking about like the energy of the cell, which is talking about these reduction potentials. Um, and this also has Gibbs free energy. Now, I'm not going to expect you to be able to do these calculations. I'm just kind of conceptually showing you how concentration relates to voltage. Um, you can notice something kind of interesting here with this reaction or this equation here. If Q is equal to one, which is going to be the case if everything's at one molar. That's our standard conditions. When all of these are equal to one molar, this whole thing becomes a giant zero. Like everything in this uh, part from here to there ends up, because anything, a natural log of one, that's equal to zero. And then anything times zero is going to be zero. So this whole thing ends up not really accounting for the voltage um, under standard conditions. So that's why the energy of the cell is normally the standard conditions as long as you have things at one molar. Um, and so if we're talking about this half reaction right here, this is its reduction potential when it's at one molar, when we have everything being one molar in a, uh, in a, bat a battery that looks something like this. Now, if we change the number of ions, that actually uh, is going to change the amount of voltage that we're reading because the reaction is going to be um, essentially changing how much space there is in the reactants and products. And Le Chatelier's principle means that, well, that's going to change the amount of energy that's given off, which it changes the spontaneity, and it's it all gets affected. So we need to be careful when we're talking about um, these things with concentrations. But if you actually want to look at this, let's, let's imagine that we have this um, F reaction right here, the standard reduction potential for sodium and its uh, reduction potential right there. And you can plug this in and do some math. And let's say that we have a very low number of uh, the sodium ions, the Na plus. So if we have a very small number of these sodium sodium ions, then um, it's going to end up affecting the math right here. So you can see that the, um, the Q no longer is 1, and so this no longer comes out as 0. And if we multiply all the numbers across, um, when you have a uh, low amount of reactants, that's like having a big Q, 
So this whole thing is kind of big in here. And when you have a big Q, that ends up making there be more of a negative um, a voltage right here. So in a sense, what we're saying is like, oh, if I have a big Q by decreasing the amount of reactants that I've got right here, um, that's going to end up making it like, um, in this case, less spontaneous. Or it's going to affect its spontaneity at the very least. So you can kind of see, okay, this is definitely going to, in this case, lower the voltage. And so it's like, uh, in a sense, going forward uh, a little bit less. And this didn't really want to go and be reduced anyways. So it kind of makes sense that if you don't have very much reactant, that you're going to have even less um, reduction happening. And you're going to need to provide more power to get that reduction to happen, right? And then same deal here is it, you could imagine you can then make it very concentrated. And so you can have um, this same calculation of plugged in the same numbers here. Oh, by the way, this Z in this formula is the same as the N in that formula. That's why I colored them the same. That's the number of electrons. The Faraday is a constant, R is a constant. This does get affected by temperature as well. Um, but if you were to plug this in, you can see if I've got a lot of reactants, that lowers my Q, that also affects my voltage. So I've got all the sun, I've got all these reactants. That means that Le Chatelier's principle means that I should be able to make more product. There's that energy difference between the two sides. And so it looks like this voltage is going to increase. So it's um, requiring less energy to go forward. So when we have a ton of this stuff, it requires less energy to go forward. And so it does change the voltage. But as you can see, I mean, you're calculating with natural logs and stuff. So this you might see in like AP chem, but it's more like a college level chem concept. And you can actually use the same formula, this Nernst equation, uh, to look at um, something where you've got like two concentrations of the same ion. It's kind of weird to think about this in terms of reaction, like this turning into that, but that's kind of what happens when an ion, like a little ion goes from this side to that side. It's kind of being a reactant turning into a product there. And so you can actually do the same thing. And for that, like the normal cell potential would be zero. And so you're just really calculating the potential of across the two sides based off of the um, the balance of the ions between the two sides. If you get to uh, like, not organic chemistry, but I think it's like biochem, you'll, you'll have to do some calculations like that where you have to see like based off these concentrations, what is the voltage? So maybe I'll do a video on like that in a, a little while. <laughs> All right, I think that's that's everything though. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for McLearning with me. I've got a few more offers that I'd like to let you know about. And remember, like and subscribe. For each video on YouTube, I am making an interactive version using HP5. These will be for sale on Podia. And if you click on the link in the video, you should be able to go directly to that product. I also have two demos I'm going to be linking so you can kind of see what they, these products look like. Um, so I would recommend checking out those demos. I also offer one-on-one -on -one remote tutoring through Wyzant. Please use the links that I have linked below. That way I can get 100% of the uh, hourly rate as opposed to 75. Each video also has a link for my Patreon, and you can join at the $3 level to get some resources I use for tutoring or to support the channel. And I also have a $5 raffle level, which you could either get some free online tutoring or five uh, interactive lessons for free. You choose which ones. And then I also have my Teachers Pay Teachers, which has some old lessons that I made from when I used to be a teacher. I may be adding to that. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope that you learned something.